What's up YouTube and welcome back to Homebrew Subaru. In this episode, I'm gonna get the Impreza ready for winter. I've got my winter wheels ready and I'm gonna give it a little bit more fuel so I can get into some boost. So what's up everyone? I guess first things first is my um, wheel tire combination that I'm going to be using this winter. Uh, if you watched the last episode, maybe you got a little glimpse of them coming out of the Forester, but this is what I went with. These are a set of Westlake Frost Extreme SW606. I've actually been running this tire for the last 10 years on some of my old 16 inch WRX rims, but they got so worn down after 10 years that I ended up just selling them with the 2011 Impreza that I sold in the spring. Uh, so I needed some new tires and I decided to load them onto these uh, JDM Legacy GTB wheels that I bought many years ago for one of my older cars. They are one of my favorite Subaru wheels and I'm glad that I held on to them. They're a little bit scuffed up and road rashed, but I decided to use them for winter as opposed to taking the time to clean them all up. And I've gone with a little bit bigger tire size on the sidewall anyway. So these are 215-50 R17. The extra 5% sidewall should help protect the wheel a little bit more and maybe even take some of the roughness out of winter driving. I know what you might be thinking, these are pretty much a Chinese tire, but to be honest, don't knock them till you try them. And especially if they're only gonna be on for a few months of the year. They're certainly worth giving a try. All I need to do is get the car off the ground and I'll be ready to put these bad boys on. Easily enough, I've got the wheel swapped on and after getting on these legacy wheels, I can see how close that four pot caliper is to touching the actual wheel. I mean, there's, there's plenty of gap to make it past there, but I just don't think the 16s would clear without a little spacer. Uh, so I've got the same spline drive gorilla nuts that i have on the forester on this thing and i get a little chrome cap put on there and you can see i've got plenty of room for that for that extra rubber to sit in there and here's the rear i would prefer having on that 25 mil spacer in the rear and the 20 in the front kind of really get them more flush with the body but i priced out those spacers and they're only going way up in price so i stuck on the five mil spacers that i had on the forester back onto this just to give me a little little bit more even spacing front to rear. And now that the wheels are all done, the fuel metering unit, I've left this unhooked for the last while, uh, basically just bypassed it and put the return line back to the tank and just haven't been stepping into boost. But with winter coming on, I'm gonna wanna play a little bit, I guess. So the fittings that are in this thing are quarter uh, and I've got some 5 16ths fittings to put into it to try and improve the porting going to the FMU to try and get my fuel pressure a little better and I also bought a, a vacuum block to kind of clean up some of the vacuum in here show you that stuff so just a standard vacuum block uh, these come with half inch fittings on either end so they can be plumbed into the brake booster line and then you get five ports going across for whatever accessories or uh, gauges that you might want to get vacuum to or boost lines to and then the 516 fittings for the FMU so I'll peel it off next and then I'll kind of figure out where this guy's gonna go I've got the fuel metering unit off and I've got it all apart this secondary hole the outer one is the one that I would really like to open up to give it a little bit more porting the center the center hole I think is actually probably 5 sixteenths when I really lined it up there the diameter might be a couple thousandths off but it's really close it's that outer hole I can tell it's a little bit too small but the design of it the o-ring that seals it is sits on the outside there on that outer ring and there's like no material you can actually take off there so even though the porting's not bad on this side it's just that that small little channel that I I just there's nothing I can do about it so I'm gonna install the fittings and see if it makes any change anyway when I put these fittings in anything to do with oil fuel red Loctite 
Seals every time. Now these FMUs were never widely used and they're pretty much dinosaurs nowadays even trying to find them. The, the cost on them went way up and there's no, no real sense of using something like this. Especially if you're, you want to make really good power, you're just going to have to get proper engine management. Uh, but I've got this all back together. If you are ever playing with something like this, uh, these diaphragms, these silicone diaphragms that are in here are very soft and tightening these bolts down is literally just finger tight maybe a little bit past finger tight and as soon as you see the the gaskets start to compress out of there that's fully tight it won't leak going any tighter will split the gasket or strip the threads uh, i've got the vacuum block pretty much ready to go and the fmu so i'm going to stab this stuff back into the car and see how i'm going to route things the fmu is back installed and i'm just trying to figure out where i'm going to sit this vacuum block I've already kind of popped this brake booster hose off and I think what I'm going to do here is cut this hose here and I actually have some dual wall ho hose that's green line. It's kind of an odd size. It's like 3 8 maybe a little bigger than 3 8 but this will allow me to reroute a little bit. I think I'm going to take this bracket off and first I'm going to cut this part of it off because really I don't need it. I mean the thing does move around a little bit but uh, the intercooler isn't going anywhere. And then uh, trim this little lip off in here so that the vacuum block can actually be bolted right to the intercooler and sit right about here. And yeah the vacuum lines will stick and poke out a little bit and maybe look a little messy but at this point does it really matter? Got the vacuum block all installed. Uh, that bracket, I already had that off. I've trimmed off some of the excess metal that I didn't need. This little lip came up here, and that was going to prevent this from bolting on. So now it's all bolted right to the intercooler nice and tight. Don't really need clamps on either end of this hose because they are really pressed on there really tight. And the uh, barb is very sharp. I'm gonna pull the whole intercooler just to get that one. I did put a clamp down here. This hose kind of wraps around, and loops around here just so to make sure there's no kinks. And then uh, I still had some of this silicone hose lying around, so I decided to use some of that for the vacuum lines. Get some zip ties on the ends of uh, the regulator in the FMU, and one comes up here onto the blow-off valve. One more thing I have to do here is I actually removed the map sensor line from that port that was in the throttle body over to the intake manifold because I'm no longer going to use this hole. I'm actually going to seal it off with the good old JB Weld. I've got that port plugged up and it's just one less potential spot to leak for vacuum or boost. So with that all finished, I am ready to get into a little bit of wiring. And it's this speed sensor circuit that I want to attack. It's this green and yellow wire that needs to go from one ECU to the other. And after digging around a little bit, I've actually made things a little bit easier for myself here because I labeled a bunch of the wiring that was going to the ECU that I put in the car. And there's the green and yellow wire marked speed signal. And down here on the WRX ECU, I actually have the A1 connector, which the, the last pin was for speed signal. It's a green and yellow. So I literally just have to splice into this wire and then just tap it into this one. And that will allow both ECUs to have a speed signal so that the speedometer will still be controlled by the WRX ECU. And then just for load parameters, the ECU I put into the car will have a signal coming from the transmission. So I have this circuit all hooked up and I double checked to make sure that I have the neutral switch hooked up, which it is. Hopefully this improves my drivability a little bit and maybe gives me a little bit of fuel mileage back. I'm ready to button this thing up and then I have to book the car for a wheel alignment. It is a very frosty morning out.
So I didn't get up too early this morning, but obviously there was a lot of uh, frost around. I guess the pigeons decided that I was gonna feed them or something. <laughs> Sorry guys, I, I got no food. No, I, I don't have any food. I, I should have brought something for you. <laughs> Well, anyways, it seems like I got some company while I'm here filming. So yeah, I just drove down to the water, kind of wanted to give you an idea of what the car looked from the, the outside. And uh, the pigeons like it. <laughs> but the wheels look really good. Um, I've had the alignment done, and I've set it to negative one degree camber on all the wheels. It, uh, it should actually hook corners the way that I really want it to. And, having that amount of traction with brand new tires and the LSD in the rear. You want to get on camera too, bro? All right. That uh, I'm just pleased the way, the way that's turned out and I can't wait to start winter driving with it. See, it's a beautiful morning here, but with those frosty mornings, I'm pretty sure that I'm planned on parking in the garage this winter. I'm gonna hold off pulling the engine out of the Forester probably till about February, and then at that point I'll uh, I'll pull it in and, and start yanking it apart. Might as well show you what the alignment looked like before and after. Uh, while my buddy was doing the alignment on it, he actually found one of the bolts missing out of the rear sway bar link. So I'm gonna have to get some lock washers at some point and put lock washers on all those bolts because I know they're all tight and one come loose on me so so I just wanted to show that the car is ready for the winter and I haven't noticed any drivability changes nothing seems to have gotten better with the way that it drives and I really don't know what the fuel mileage is going to look like yet with the ECU getting that vehicle speed reference so I'll just have to wait and see I don't think it's going to get a whole lot better but if you like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't already, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. Leave your questions and comments further down below. And I'll see you in the next one.